Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Authentic Thursday. It's your girl, it's your girl, Kate. Hey. <laughs> so welcome everybody. I hope you are having an amazing Thursday. And as I kind of rush to kind of finish setting up, I just want to say that today has been awesome. Today has been so awesome for me. Your girl got her hair kind of, you know, cut or whatever. But I try to look nice on here, you know what I mean? So welcome to Authentic Thursday where we have conversations about originality, creativity, excellence, and faith. And also where we just kind of dive into current events where we also are educated and we see life from a different perspective, not our own life, but we can look through someone else's lenses and really find out exactly, exactly what we want to know. Today, we will be talking with Jordan Martin, Jordan Martin, who is a stock investor. Jordan Martin is so cool, so dope, so laid back, but so smart. It is incredible how we met. But today we're going to talk about stock investments, right? But we're also going to get into health and also traveling. So if you like to travel, this is a conversation for you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to bring Jordan on right now. While we wait, I hope you hey, drop in the context. We ready. We ready. <laughs> How's it? Jordan, you froze up on me. I, I what? I froze? Yeah, you froze up on me. Do you see me? Am I there? You coming in? You coming in clear now, but it's still like you kind of scratchy. We don't want that. What about now? <laughs> Are we good? I mean, we can hear you. We can hear you. I just don't know how clear like you look on the screen. Somebody hey, help well, us out I, in the comments over there. How does he look? I don't have a haircut, so, you know, it's really okay. <laughs> <laughs> I probably look better than messed oh. up, pixelated. <laughs> You're funny, but we ready, we ready, we ready. So what you been up to today, first of all? Oh, man, uh, trading, one trading. K, KJ, I had... Um, an awesome time really with God today. I know that wasn't the topic. Um, topic was not related to God at all, but I did, uh, I haven't done it in a while, but I did an hour of just like prayer and meditation and just talking to God and reading the Bible, asking him to show me what I needed to see and, um, point me in the right direction. And it was, it felt so good. I felt so much peace afterwards. Um, he gave me tons of guidance, eight things. Like, literally, I made a list as I was praying. I was like, God, who do I need to talk to? He said, you need to talk to so-and-so about this. You need to, you know, do this. I said, what do I need to do for the rest of the day? He said, you need to make sure you look at this. And just, man, <laughs> like I said, I know that wasn't the topic, but that really just boosted my day um, by so much. Just Bye. talking to God. You and God like this, ain't he? Like, what's up? <laughs> hey, hey, now. <laughs> but um, other than other than that, though, it was um uh, just the same, you know, handling stuff for my business, running my group chat, um, trading the market, interacting with my family. So overall, it was a great day as always. And then I'm here. Okay, okay. So you, so you talking some stuff that we don't we to the people. We don't know what all this <laughs> this vernacular is. So today we are going to be talking about you being a stock investor. How did you even right. get started? Like, what piqued your interest for that in the first place? Okay. Well, my mom, she really kind of kicked everything off for me. Um, I think I was about around 10 years old when she first introduced me to Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. And, you know, that's one of the top books for personal finance out there. And I read that when I was about 10 or 11. I was like, okay, you know, you make money. And, oh, it's good to be a business owner and an investor. Oh, you can make your money, make you more money? Okay. That sounds uh, so that kind of kicked it off. And it um, turns out my mom had an investment account already set aside for me. 
So when I was around 14 or 15, like she kind of turned it over to me in a sense because she saw I was serious about it. I was studying. I was reading. Um, I just developed a passion for it. She turned it over to me. I was like, okay, you know, looking at this, looking at that, looking at that. And so uh, ever since then, it's been a, a love of mine. And uh, as I continue to develop, you know, my skill set, my knowledge about it, I was able to start helping other people. You know, so fast forward to college time, um, I was starting to make, you know, different types of uh, strategies where I was making a thousand dollars in a day, um, you know, two thousand dollars in a week as a sophomore and junior and senior in college. Um, so that kind of led to the business that I mentioned, where now I have a business where I have courses that teach about trading stocks. I have a group chat with 230 people now where I just, like I said, go through teaching people how to trade, letting them see what I'm doing so they can say, okay, if he can make $1,000 in a day, I can make $1,000 in a day. $1,000 in a day. Hey, that's just, that's, <laughs> you know, that's some of us can't part. even make $1,000 in a month. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. That's why I love helping people learn about it. Mm. So Jordan, you got started. I don't even think I knew you got that started or start started that early. <laughs> Ten or eleven reading a personal finance book that has had to had a had to have a tremendous impact on your life. Like seriously, I'm glad your mom was in a position to like do that for real, for real. Because baby, <laughs> <laughs> everybody, well, ain't, you... everybody got that privilege. Okay, <laughs> man, it's. Is she's always been one to like really, really, I guess, just hold it down for me in all aspects, um, encourage me, educate me, guide me. Uh, so, you know, shout out to my mom. Um, hey, shout out, mom. Right. Um, but even with that, I've always kind of been a step of a step ahead um, as far as, you know, what normal, normal 10 year olds aren't reading rich dad, poor dad, uh, you know, normal 14 year olds aren't going to the library saying, hey, can I get uh, books on investing? <laughs> so <laughs> um, I've always been like that where, you know, I'm seeking out mentorship. I have different mentors for, you know, spiritual things, entrepreneurship. I'm um, just growing as a man overall. Mm. And so um, that's been another critical factor is, and a common thing is they all say, wow, you're just, you know, you're just 18, but you're, doing you know 20 or 30 hours a week shadowing physical therapists because you want to do that that's ahead of your age or oh you trading the stocks and you're teaching people you're only 20 but you're teaching you know 50 people a week how to trade stocks uh so that that has had a huge huge impact on mm. my life so funny story you all i just want to tell this story i guess like what was this last year last Hell, year last summer the last summer, I met this guy, Jordan. Like, literally, I was working out. Was I by my... No, I was with London. Mm, yeah, London. London. Um, two other people, too. Two other... I don't Dana. Remember. Dana. Okay, yeah, we were... And yep. then probably um, Dion, probably. It was yeah, Dion, yeah, probably. that was it. So, we were out there working out at the Memphis campus on a track. And here, here's this guy over here. I think he has a shirt off. And, y'all, I don't meet a stranger. <laughs> so, I don't meet a stranger at all. <laughs> we over here working out, he working out. So I just go over there and we start chopping it up. We start chopping it up. I'm talking about this, he's talking about that. We I feel like we instantly became like friends that day. Yeah, because yeah. we have been talking ever since. Like we haven't lost connect, you know, over just a year. I know it hasn't been that long, but you know, sometimes you meet people, but it's like, is this person really gonna like, you know? Right, right. And that was when I was really doing, pushing Amway really, really hard because I was like, I was in this zone of like, grind, 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 grind. And he, yeah. he was really testing me, y'all. He was really testing me. <laughs> he was trying to say, he was trying to see what's this girl really about? Like, what's she talking about? What's this woman really about? You know what I'm saying? So, ooh, my eyelash. You see that get stuck like that? Ooh. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Jordan, um, meeting you, I think, was really cool. And you were instantly like, what's up? Yeah, man, I remember, I really remember that, like, kind of clearly, too, Um, because it was, I had just got off work, I was working my internship full-time, Um, so I was, you know, eat a little bit, then go to the track to work out, 
And, you know, I saw y'all over there, and I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. I'm going to just keep doing my thing. Um, and then, you know, y'all invited me to come work out. I was like, okay, okay, I'll come work out. You know, we started working out, working out. And then I think you asked for my email. You asked for my email so that you could maybe, like, start connecting with me as far as, you know, business thing. And I was like, you want my business email or my personal email? <laughs> and then you was like, oh, whichever one. I got a business and a personal, too. I said, oh, what's your business? <laughs> <laughs> and so we started talking about each other's businesses and all that. And we we were out there talking for like three or four hours just standing outside <laughs> mosquitoes <Just talking. laughs> it was getting dark <laughs> just yeah. talking man talking Literally. about goals and plans and yes so it's the same for you man uh i was so glad to meet somebody that you know was ambitious was about it was set on what they were trying to accomplish and even though you know we i was only up there for three months i probably only knew you for like two or three weeks that I was still there. But we have been able to maintain some type of contact and still kind of, you know, be able to provide encouragement, provide mm -hmm. support, provide, um, you know, it's that extra push and connect on different things, bounce ideas off each other if we need to, right? So uh, <clears throat> you you have been, you've been pretty, pretty dope too, you know. That's you. We we'll focus on you today. <laughs> but I want to ask you this though. I got to still give you your credit. Thank you, thank you, thank okay. you. I take it humbly. I take it humbly. I want to ask you a question. If I was a person, which I am a person, but if I was a person who wanted to instantly get ready to start investing, what is some right. like some basic things that you would let me know? And I just want to take before you. I want you to think on that. I want to say hello to everybody who's joining. Hey, how y'all doing? We're gonna have a real authentic conversation. Me and him are cool. And we're just going to put you guys a part of this conversation. We're going to laugh. We're going to smile. We're going to do whatever we need to do. We're going to get serious. Whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you could answer that question Look for somebody, you know? Okay. If you're a beginner, and it's, it's wonderful that you asked that because uh, I actually had that conversation with somebody today um, that was completely beginner. They were actually in their mid-40s, uh, which is, you know, as you start to get older, your ability to kind of like learn and be open to new things starts to kind of fade off. Um, but they were able, they were open, you know? And so we talked about it as a beginner, you uh, first, you want to set aside a certain amount of money that you're uh, comfortable with losing. Like you said, it's authentic um, because trading isn't always a, a good day. You don't always have a good day. Um, actually about 80% of traders lose their money. Um, and quit because it's not always just like a cut and simple, dry, easy thing to do. It takes a lot of discipline because you're using your real money, which is why it needs to not be your rent money. It can't be your money for college or for your kids, for food. You know, you don't want to trade your dinner money because um, if you do lose it, which you could do, then you're not going to eat. So uh, the, we the eat. first thing is <laughs> exactly the first thing is always you know, set aside money that you can afford to lose. Um, secondly, I would say start learning. Um, with anything you do, you don't just rush into the NBA. You don't just rush into practice. You start off by learning about it. You start by watching. You know, you see what people are doing. You see how they're doing it. You study it. Uh, so just like any other skill set that you wanted to develop, especially mm -hmm. when your money's involved, you want to start learning reading researching and so when i was coming up i was reading blogs on youtube um just looking up things talking to people and one thing i will say this is number three one thing i will say that i didn't do that i wish i did was practice trading and what i mean by that is it's called paper trading but essentially all it is is you know you say okay i like apple I, I think if I was investing my money, I'd buy Apple stock. And you look at it, you see what price is at, you say, okay, I'd be willing today to put $300 in, right? And just trying to see what happens over time so that you're not actually using your real money, but you're getting a feel for form. And that's one thing I didn't do. I, like I said, my mom kind of gave me power to my account. Mm -hmm. And I hopped in and just started doing and doing and doing and doing. 
and I had a lot of a lot of hard uh pay for lessons over time that could have been avoided had I practiced beforehand um, mm -hmm. so that would be kind of the last thing I say as a beginner that you need to really get in is uh getting your mental right that's the last thing get your mental right get your mental right okay yes Mentality. Uh, it's that discipline controlling discipline fear and greed um you know not to just get all off on the god thing but the love of money is the root of all evil people always mess it up and say money is the root of all evil. it's not what the scripture says the love of money <laughs> okay get it right get it right and so when you're starting <laughs> When you're starting to become so attached to mm. the money in the market and, oh, if I put this money in here, I can make all this and I can make all that. And, uh, that's when you start to screw yourself over mm. and you are sad and depressed because you lost your rent money that you shouldn't have been investing in the first place because you were being greedy and lacking discipline. Ooh. So I think that's like four or five of my best practices for a beginner coming in if you want to be successful investing. See, you didn't said a lot of things that I could go to town on, right? <laughs> but <laughs> let me just tell you this. I got an email in my, uh, I got an email sent to me for my little Acorns account. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and it said something about like $50 or whatever. I'm like, how do I even get $50? I was trying to stop that thing. I don't, I don't really even know. But um, so going from that beginner stage, right? Um, I do want to double back to the mentality and discipline, greed, and fear. Like, I do want to go back to that. But before we go there, what are some apps that some people started that they can go and, you know, go play around with? And do you bank? Like, what is your – that's the first part of the question. Then the second part of it, do you think – are there any black-owned, you know, apps? or banks or you know what's your what's your area right like what's your take on that and suggestion on that uh so as far as and i really i really think i just forgot your first part of your question. the first part <laughs> yeah i was like it's probably a lot let's go back to the apps the apps that they okay the apps play. right 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 okay um for beginners there are there are tons of apps out there um, for beginners, I'd say it really comes down to the amount of control you want in your account. Mm. If you want to, like with your Acorns, you don't choose the actual stocks. You can really just choose whether you're conservative, moderate, or aggressive, I believe, for Acorns. And it invests it for you in a different uh, portfolio based on that. There's an app like Stash where you can they can let you choose a few stocks to have maybe like a hundred stocks that you could choose from um and then they have a lot of different etfs which are a basket of related stocks uh, so if you like mm -hmm. if you're into dogs like they literally have something you can invest in that's a collection of pet stores or you know things of that nature so i'd say stash acorns um acorns if you want the least amount of involvement you just want to put money in and walk away <laughs> okay <me>. stash stash <laughs> would be if you are kind of in the middle like i want to be in a little bit of control but i kind of do just want to put it in and walk away maybe i'll look at it once a month i say go with stash and then for beginners as far as ease of use i'd say robin hood um just because it's an easy to use platform is everything's pretty simple about it um they do have some glitches from time to time but overall, I mean, nobody's perfect. Overall, I say those three. If you want the most control, I say with Robin Hood for a beginner coming in. Mm. Okay. Well, they can't be playing with nobody's money. I know they're right. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> hey, KJ, um, huh? could you give me one second to share this link with my family? How? Okay. I'm, I have a I don't know where he went, you are, but I just want to recap what he just said about the app for people who are trying to be beginners in the industry of stock investing. Those apps are Stash, Acorns, and Robinhood. He also said the first about four things that he wants beginners to know if they're looking to invest, it is 
set aside money you do not mind losing because there is always a risk of losing some money when you're an investor. The second thing he said was start learning first. Go and talk to those people. Go have those conversations. Go look up some YouTube, you know, videos if you're really interested. Um, also, go read some personal finance, bo finance books, some investing books, because it's going to be very, very, uh, it's going to be very, very useful in your journey of stock investing. And he talked about portfolio and things of that nature. And then the third thing he said was mentality. Learn to discipline your mental and he also said control fear and greed. So while we wait on him to come back, while we wait on him to come back, does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Um, he's coming back right now. He's coming back right now. Okay, there he is. All right. Just wanted to go ahead and get that out to my family. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. I just kind of gave a recap of everything you just said. We're going to go ahead okay. and go into... Um, <clears throat> you talked about controlling fear and greed, and it's so right. amazing that you said that because I think a, that a podcast called Blessed and Bossed Up, where she said a warning, this is a warning to uh, entrepreneurs, and her big, the biggest thing that I took away from that podcast was that in these times, there's an increase in an influx of people wanting to be super ambitious and to be entrepreneurs, and there's coming from two spectrums of of the of the grid you have people who are doing things out of survival like i need to go get this because i don't got no food whatever 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 right, so right, it's a right. survival thing and then you have people who are just coming from it coming at it who are putting stuff out because hey it's, you know i got all these eyes and ears on her let me tap into it while i can and so right. she was really just honing in on like you have to check your motive and so I really like that you even talked about greed because, and then we can get biblical with it. And I can't remember the exact scripture that she used. So I won't quote her on that, but I will go say, if you are a person who is of faith and of pure, you know, gestures and motives, go listen to Blessing Boss Up podcast. And it's called, the episode is called A Warning for Entrepreneurs because you don't want to find yourself just putting out information just to be putting stuff out. If you have a responsibility to a, a, responsibility to a platform. And I can say about Jordan, even we talked and chopped it up earlier this week, he checked on to my spirituality. So I really like that you said that. So I, I did want to double back to that. But why do you say control fear? Like what have you saw yourself in get controlled in fear, which, which is the reason why you said that? Or what are you seeing about fear? Well, so it's a, it's a two-way thing. Like I said, fear and greed. And I'm, of course, ultimately disciplined. But to the fear side of it, you know, one of the classic sayings is scare money don't make money. Um, and so really, the fear is working two ways where you can have FOMO, which is fear of missing out, mm. which can mess you up when you're trying to kind of ride the trend, hop on the bandwagon. And in the stock market, things don't just the stocks don't just go straight up. Right. It'll kind of go up at an angle. Sometimes they do kind of have like a big couple of days where it's boom, 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 up. And one thing with fear of missing out is you're like, oh, man, I got to hop on. Everybody's making money. Everybody's making money. But me and you're scared of missing out, which turns into greed. Mm -hmm. And now you throw all your money in there and then people start pulling their money out. And now you're stuck losing. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is where people are scared to invest, period. Because there is a risk that you could lose your money, which is why, you know, people will say investing is gambling. And, you know, people, a lot of times I'll hear that investing is gambling. And I did just make a Twitter thread about this recently. But I'm, one of the things I say all the time is when you're gambling or you're in the lottery or you're at the casino, for the most part, you don't have any control and what happens for the one you don't have control mm -hmm. you know if you're playing blackjack or poker whatever it's all up to what cards they give you and what cards they flip over whereas in the stock market you can research you can you can have that due diligence where you can read a hundred articles on apple right now if you wanted to 
to find out if it's worth putting your money in. Mm -hmm. The second thing with that, and people saying they're scared because it's like gambling, is when you're investing in a stock, you're actually giving that company money. You are getting that company money in exchange for ownership of that company. So when you buy a share of Apple, you are now like a 0.1 or a 0.0000000001 percent owner of the company, and they, in exchange, give you 0.0000001 percent of their profits. Hmm. So when you go play the lottery and you put, you know, five dollars or ten dollars on it, whatever, hoping that something works, if it doesn't work out that day, that money's gone. Mm -hmm. When you're investing in a company. You can put your money in it for years. And so even if the company, you know, does a little bad this month, they can still come back out of that and you can make money next month. Mm. So that's another part of, you know, kind of trying to get over that fear. But people will be afraid and talk themselves out of it and then kind of just sit back and be like, dang, I could have had. I could have if I had just, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm getting that fear is limiting you. Mm -hmm. The fear limits you and the greed kind of just eats you up because you just, I want more, I want more. And then you're like, oh, man. I it's never nothing. enough. It's never enough. It's exactly. Yeah. You end up messing up. It's never enough. Okay. So let's transition into um, health because we did meet okay. while we were both, you know, working out. So. Right, right, right. What is your, you know, I guess. If you could tell somebody who is a young person who is trying to go on this healthier journey, what would you say to them? You know, what would you be telling them to kind of do for like maybe just a daily, every day, you know, thing? Okay. Okay. So I'm assuming that's more geared towards people that aren't already in their own routine. Mm -hmm. um, people that are kind of shifting into a, well, I'm at home anyway. I can't get to a gym. Maybe the gym's not open. Maybe I don't want to go to a gym where there's a lot of people. Uh, I say if you're first starting out with your um, kind of health journey, the, the best thing to do is honestly your diet. Um, even if you work out, no matter how much you work out, your diet has to be in alignment with whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you have you can have success as far as health goes just off a of diet alone, mm -hmm. but off of working out alone, it's not going to work. You can't go in the gym, you know, push 500 pounds, go back home and eat honey buns because that's not going to build your body back up. Um, so, of course, over time, your body's going to react ne negatively to that. Uh, so I said the first thing is just start, you know, kind of easing your way into you know, and we know the same old type of things. Ease your way into a little more vegetables. Ease your way out of, you know, so many sugary snacks. Um, there's nothing wrong with snacking. Oof. You know, it's just making sure that your snacks are in alignment with your goal. And yeah. so you can have, you can, you don't, you can eat a cookie. Like, it's not about, <laughs> you know, cutting out everything. No more cookies, no more this, no more that. But it's about you going from, you know, every time I want a snack, I go grab a whole pack of Oreos and just kind of chill and watch TV to, okay, I'll grab me three Oreos at the pack and then I'll go sit down and kind of chill. Mm -hmm. um, or you could, of course, swap out the Oreos for balance. something else. But <laughs> Somebody say balance. balance. Exactly. <laughs> yes, you can still eat whatever you want. Just change it to be in alignment. Yeah. Um, when you start moving in towards your workouts, and it's really with anything you do, that you want to build that habit of consistency mm -hmm. to get the most results. You know, you don't, you don't get any results from doing something one time. Mm -hmm. You need to continuously do it to continuously reap that harvest. So with you're trying to build that habit, you don't want to come in kicking the door. Like, you know what? Boom. I'm doing ups every single day when yesterday you didn't do anything. That's, that's not really realistic. But um, when you have that goal, say your goal is just to run a mile straight or a mile at 10 minutes, you know, you just start pacing and building up to it because you might not be able to run a full mile. You might start jogging or walking. But you just start out, you know, today I'm running a quarter of a mile. Mm -hmm. This whole week. And this because people always pressure themselves so much, they end up giving up mm -hmm. because they're not meeting their expectation. 
But if you break it down, you say, you know what, this week, just a quarter of a mile every day. Yeah, so it's, it's more easy. like bringing it down more to like a reality. Like, let's have a yes. real conversation with ourselves and say, well, yes. really, what can I really do? What can I and really you have to make it. You have to make it realer than real. Um, and it's okay to start kind of below what you're expecting because you'd rather be below and hit it as you build up. Mm -hmm. than to shoot so high and miss that now you're mentally defeated because you just took an L. Mm -hmm. And so now you give up because you say, dang, I thought I could do it. I can't do it. Oh, well, it's over. Whereas you start building up, it's stack, 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 quarter of a mile, half a mile, three quarters, full mile, mile and a quarter, you know? Yeah. So, um, so you, that's what you got to do. So you travel, and I mean, we talk about this all the time, right? <laughs> So what what are some countries you visited and um if you could just talk about one country in particular, what did visiting that country kind of teach you just about life? Uh I last I don't even know, it was last year. I think it was when I was in Honduras. Um being over there kind of going through and looking at the way they live, uh, people in the United States a lot of times don't realize how good we have it um, because oftentimes one of the poorest families here still has it a lot better than the average family in another country. And seeing, you know, seeing the streets, seeing the homes, um, seeing... It just kind of brings into the reality that, wow, I really have it good. Like, even if I am in the hood or whatever, it's still better than being in the hood in some random area in the third world country. Yeah. Uh, so as far as me, it was really an eye opener to, um, like I said, just experience that gratitude and gratefulness for the things that I've been blessed with. You know, even the opportunities, because they don't have opportunities. You wonder why everybody's trying to get to the United States and why it's called the land of opportunity. And, you know, you hear about all the immigrants that come over here and turn up. Like, turn you know up. what I'm saying? You hey, always hear it about it. They turn up when they get here because they come from the bottom. They come from nothing. And so when you come from that, you got that hunger. They get to the hunger. States and say, what? What? I can be whatever I put my mind to. Wow. I'm all on it. You know, it's so, that little um, sentence that you, that you just said that just kind of stuck out to me because not only do I tell my students this all the time, and I had a conversation with one of my students this morning, and he was like, you said we was rich. You know, we said we was rich or whatever. Because he was like, I was thinking about how you told me that a lot of people look like they got money, but they really mm -hmm. don't. And so it's like this persona thing or whatever. And I was like, well, let me put this into context because I don't want you to take this out of context because he was like, you rich or whatever. I was like, I was saying in comparison to the rest of some of the rest of the world that right. some of the poorest families here, like you're saying, if you have a cell phone, you're definitely considered rich. You know what I'm saying? You don't even have to be right, clean right. water. You know, you get your meals every day. That's not a thing for you. And so I had to put right. that back into context. But you just saying, you know, Zank, I can come over here and it's like I can do and be whatever I put my mind on. like magnificent and phenomenal that thought is to even have exactly, the privilege yeah, to have yeah. that thought and i know we have our you know confusion and chaos that is here but truthfully we can be exactly what we want and desire to be if we definitely try to get it out of the mud and we compare yeah. our living situation to other countries but i want to go ahead and move forward um and then we're going to end this because this is my last question. It's been a good conversation. We've talked about stock investing, of course, surface level, health, and then traveling. Right, but the right. last thing I want to ask you is, um, what is your vision for the future? Because you live, like, what is, going, what is it going to be? What do you intend to leave? What impression do you intend to leave for the future, for the present? About like the future like my kids or you mean like you can answer this years? however you want to i'm just gonna <laughs> ask the question okay okay well i can speak personally um as far as my own life i'm 
currently in the stage of still always growing, always, always growing. But um, my overall life goal, if I had to like kind of break it down, would be mainly to help others grow, um, to help others grow, to give others opportunities to see their potential and help them reach their potential. I'm working on, currently I am working on a nonprofit with a group of guys where we'll provide financial education and resources to not just the black community, but primarily the black community um, with an emphasis on families that have single parents. Mm. Um, that's just my personal thing. Whereas when I started out um, growing up, my mom was a single mother <clears throat> and seeing her go through what she went through, hearing her go through what she went through and dealt with, um, even as being just a young black woman in America, you know, kind of helped me see, like, you know, it's it's more than just her. It's tons of people out there. And uh, my grandmother was a single grandmother. So as far as the future, it's just leaving leaving everybody you talk to, leaving every situation you touch better than it was originally, you know, leaving your impact where people are like, wow, Jordan is a man of God. I need to go get on God. I need to be better. <laughs> Um, that's my main thing, you know, not to like elevate myself. Of course, I just want to elevate God, but yeah. I want to be an example in all aspects of how, especially young black men who have such a bad reputation and um, ultimately their reputation can seep into their mind and they become, you know, kind of limited by that, where they think that they have to be a ball player or a rapper or, you know, this and that to be successful or be recognized Mm -hmm. um, as a successful black man when it's not mm -hmm. there's definitely other things you can do right so uh, my main thing is to be a solid example of a christian black man successfully living in america mm. i always get to get a guy on here who is like strong in his faith and it's always amazing <laughs> to me <laughs> because i think uh we need that and a part of what inspired bosses um uh, stands for is faith but faith can be taken in so many different different directions it's spiritually, but naturally, you know, just having the belief within yourself to do what you right. may not even understand is you're capable of doing, you know, to go on a journey of trusting who you are and your talents and like just doing and going and getting up and being a part of something that you right. might not necessarily know exactly how to draw it out, you know. <laughs> But it's faith, and and it's beautiful, and it and it pushes you. And passion, you know, can help you pursue all of those things. But it's been an amazing, amazing, amazing. You know what? Before I just, I do want to ask this one class question. I think this is really, really, really um going to be good. And it kind of ties into what you just said, but I want to really hone in on men. Like I, I, okay. I love my men. That's what we're doing. Men of the future, right? So what does it mean for you when it when it, when I came to you and say, hey, you want to be a part of this thing, you know? Um, what does it mean to be a man of the future? Uh, a man, so it's okay. Of course, that's a two two type of word thing. So first, to have an understanding of that, I believe you have to cultivate your definition of what it means to be a man, um, and you know, not to specifically just push faith in somebody. But I mean, regardless of faith, because I know there are different faiths and different you know, beliefs, regardless of faith, I believe a man is one who, you know, of course, one stands for himself and for his family, mm -hmm. um, but two stands for the people around him, um, you know, to where you don't turn a blind eye to someone in need. If you can help them, help them, right? Mm -hmm. um, regardless of the situation. Um, so a man is one who stands for himself and for others, who takes care of business, you know, and can get into all of that. <laughs> but it's, it, and that's really like kind of the main thing is just handling yourself and carrying yourself in a way that gets the things done that need to be done. Not, um, you know, and it's just my idea, but mm -hmm. that work life balance, um, because just being authentic, because it's authentic Thursday. You know, <laughs> it's, it's too many, it's too many men that I'm seeing, um, in our time that have such a I want to be a provider that that's become the main thing for a man is a provider oh. and that they become so much of a provider 
that they neglect their family. Mm. And so I can just be real. I mean, I done shared the link with my family, but my family knows my whole life and whoever else knows it's, it is what it is. Personally, my relationship with my biological father got off to a bad start because of that. Um, and I, long story short, I've lived, I moved out of Michigan down to Mississippi for seven years. I just moved back to Michigan two months ago. Um, and our relationship has grown greatly and it's really thanks to Christ. But um, him focusing so much on provide, 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 provide. You know, y'all got everything y'all need, provide, 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 provide. But I'm like, dude, I got everything I need except a father. Mm. Like, I have the clothes. I have, I got a car. Like, I have all that except for a real male role model to show me what I need to do. So a man doesn't forget the most important things and can just manage the most important things. Mm. Okay. Come on Fox now. Start tearing up that was my, good. My that was so good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Okay, and for the future, the future. Uh oh. Uh, I swiped off on accident. <laughs> the future is just about what it is. It's about moving forward, looking forward. You know, you ever try to walk forward while looking backwards, mm. or looking up, or even looking left to right? It's hard, right? You can't drive down the street looking in the rearview mirror the whole way or with your neck turned. Mm. So you need to be focused on what's forward. Let the past be the past. You messed up. You know, this and that happened, whatever, whatever. But to be a man of the future, you need to be able to accept what is placed for you ahead mm. and work on keeping your mind on the things ahead, what you need to accomplish moving forward, how you need to grow and change and develop um, and not be so caught up on the past things you know you can't be 45 acting and thinking and behaving like you were when you were 15 mm. or 20 you know as a man you have to grow mm. and as a man of the future you have to grow into what you're called into mm. i really like that men you know the future is 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 coming you're living in the present right now and every day every step you make every time you feel breath in your body coming and leaving coming and going that is a part of what your future is and so you can do one small thing every day to impact the people around you yourself and we know that change and growth can be a painful process and we're not going to get into that but it's the pain that leads you to your success like our last guest last week said it is a pain if it wasn't for the pain if it wasn't for the growth we couldn't be men and women of the future. We couldn't be exactly what we need to be for the people that are around us and for ourselves. So he has spoke right. a lot about, you know, controlling fear and understanding that greed is not going to be the way to your prosperity. You might have it materially, but in the inside, it's going to be never be enough. So you have to be enough for you. You have to look around yourself and say, hey, I'm content. And compared to the rest of the world, you're really in a good spot. And when it comes to certain third <laughs> really? world countries, you know what I'm saying? You have clean water. You can go and, you know, get on the bus, even if you don't have transportation. You know, there's so many different things that you can do, even if your mind is right. You know what I'm saying? Even if your fingers work. Don't get me started, because there's, there's a lot Man. of stuff to be grateful for. <laughs> KJ, KJ. I, when I, so every day, um, me and two of my closest friends, we do a group Bible study every morning. And we rotate prayer between us three but every time i pray like i start off with thanks and i every time i always say you know just thank thank you that i can see <laughs> that i have hands i have all my sins because people every day are getting amputated people every day that might go blind like dude and we sitting here complaining about what <laughs> right would you would you rather lose your your arms and your legs so i know today um I don't know if we're on a time limit, but I do uh, want to share real quickly that one of the things that led me, one, to um, start believing in Christ and to just really have gratefulness for life itself is um, in 2016, May 17, 2016, I was uh, going to graduate. I was leaving graduation practice for um, high school graduation, and I was going down the highway. Situation happened with me and another driver where we collided and I spun out 
into the barrier. Um, so my car was totaled. Car was totaled, smoking, coming from the car. I got out the car and fast forward a little bit. I was in the middle of the highway and got hit head on by a car going down the highway. It knocked me in the air. Um, the woman said, I only flipped, I only counted two times that I flipped in the air, but she said I flipped three times, landed, got back up, you know, they took me to the hospital, all that and all that, all that. So one, the fact that I got in a, a really bad wreck and then got hit, like the car hit me like right here, like Whoa. going on the highway. So he wasn't going 10 miles an hour. Um, in fact, that the impact knocked me into the air, uh, one. And then secondly, just being grateful for life for that. But the whole thing about being able to walk and see and all that. When I was in the emergency room, um, I was there for a minute. You know, they try to make sure I wasn't going to die or whatever. <laughs> um, and so they, they were talking about holding me overnight. <clears throat> and I was like, dude, I didn't even want to come to the hospital. Y'all kidnapped me. I said, I want to go home. <laughs> and they was like, it was like, no, nah, you need to stay. You might have internal bleeding, all that stuff. Yeah. So, the dude, the doctor said, if you can walk across this room, we'll let you go home. And me walking across that that small little hospital room, like, it might have been like a 10-foot walk, but each step was the most pain I ever felt in my life. Mm. Like, that, that little walk across a room from wall to wall, it was so unbearable. I did it, but it, it took like a whole minute. And I just said right then and there that, you know, one, I'm thankful that I still have my life. But two, I will never take for granted something that's so simple as being able to walk. Because that day I literally almost lost my ability to, one, be alive, but two, to walk, mm -hmm. you know. And that's something we never think about. Mm -mm. It's given to us just, free. You know, we, yes. We didn't have to we pay for this. think about it. <laughs> people in wheelchairs, people... That can only use one leg, can't use either of their legs, man. It's real. So just everybody be grateful for what you have. Man. It's always going to be people that have other things. Uh, you know, J. Cole said in this song, Love Yours, it's always going to be someone with a bigger house, you know, all that type of things. All but that. it doesn't matter until you love what you have. It's always somebody better at whatever, more successful, more money. Yeah. It don't matter yeah. until you love what you got. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That really touched my spirit. I felt that for real, for real, down on the inside of me, right. my soul. <laughs> I'm happy. Um, You guys, we love you. We want to always impart into you. If you're watching the replay, always, as always, drop in the comments, hashtag replay. This YouTube, I mean, this video will be on YouTube next okay. Tuesday. Hopefully, I can air it at 12 a.m. I always drop them on Tuesday, even though I re fully record live on Thursday. Um, but this has been an awesome, awesome conversation. Yes. I mean, we talked a, a couple of days ago, but this right here, this, this was a talk. And we got to bring people in into this conversation. So right. I'm really excited about that. I hope you all have learned something tonight. I hope you are able to take something away and walk away feeling more confident in yourself to go after whatever you are you know, looking to achieve. If you're a man, I hope you feel more manly and you like feel more like I can protect <laughs> and I can provide, but not only provide, I can be someone who is present, a pr present yes. provider. Um, but we love you all. We love you all. This is That's Authentic Thursday. And Jordan, you are definitely KJ. a man of the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having me too. Thank you so much. I'll tell you all, he's going to drop where he can be found in the uh, comments below, oh, but you can go follow his Facebook page. Uh, you know, Adam as a friend is on uh, Jordan Martin, but you can also follow his um, Facebook page, his business Facebook page at Martin Investments Group. Please. On Instagram as well. On Instagram as well. He's, he yeah. has his little threads going and everything like that, but I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to know you. I'm so grateful that you tuned in tonight and we'll be back next week with another man of the future. And as always, we are healthy, wealthy, and wise. And remember to be inspired. Be inspired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>